Hi, um, my name is Alina and I'm a product manager for the Max Quantito and I'm now really happy to talk with you about um, how you can advance your clinical um, T-REC research. This is the agenda for the talk. Um, so first we will have a look uh, into some yeah, introductory words to regulatory T cells. Then we will um, talk about where T-Rex are actually used as a tool. And then we will have a look at different um, workflows that can be used to um, yeah, manufacture clinical T-Rex. And in the end, of course, we will also have some closing remarks. So Miltini Biotech is at uh, the forefront of pioneering um, clinical research, and this is um, focusing on immunotherapy, graft engineering, and also tissue regeneration. We provide different platforms for that, such as the Clinimax Prodigy platform, but also the Max Quantito cell sorter, and we will have a closer look at the, um, these two systems um, during the talk. So first of all, um, let's sum up what regulatory T cells are actually doing. They have a really pivotal role in the immune system. Um, they have three main functions. The first is to suppress overwhelming immune responses, and by this, T-Rex are keeping the balance and the homeostasis in the body. Um, the second function is to also suppress immune responses against self-antigens. And by this mode of action, T-Rex actually protect against autoimmunity and they are mediating the tolerance. The third um, mode of action is unwanted, but I will name it here because it's very important for um, cancer therapies because actually T-Rex, because of their mode of action, they can also suppress anti-cancer immune responses and thereby support uh, the tumor growth, which is, of course, what we don't want. Um, let's have a closer look at regulatory T-cells here at the bottom. Um, they don't have a unique marker. They are um, identified by the expression of CD4 and CD25, but also by the absence of CD127. And there is also an internal marker, which is uh, FOXP3. In the end, um, T-Rex are classified into three main um, subtypes, and this is based on where they actually come from or where the cell type has been developing. And um, this is naive T-Rex, peripheral T-Rex, and there is also um, in vitro or induced um, T-Rex. So T-Rex are um, an attractive tool in um, the treatment of different diseases, such as um, inflammation, autoimmunity. They are important in transplantation or graft versus host disease. And as I said, also they have been to be considered in cancer. In the healthy body, there is a good balance between regulatory T cells and the effector T cells. However, um, there are situations during a disease when this get into some imbalance. And for example, here it could help if um, the T-Rex compartment is um, replenished with um, a T-Rex infusion to again restore this balance. So therefore, T-Rex are an attractive tool and they are um, already used for graft versus host disease, autoimmune diseases, and also in transplantation. The manufacturing of um, clinical T-Rex is a challenging task and there are different steps that have to be considered. Um, the first step is the isolation, which um, is of course um, very important and has to be contamination free. Um, another step is that um, T-Rex are usually needed in an ultra pure state to have an effective treatment. Um, and also, of course, the maintenance of the cells in culture is very um, fundamental to the whole process. The good news here is that Milsony Biotech can provide solutions for all of these pain points. Um, we do have the platforms to effectively isolate the cells on the Clinimax Plus, Clinimax Prodigy, and also the Max Quantito cell sorter is helping in these regards. Um, and for the uh, maintain, maintenance of the cells and the culture, we offer different reagents as well. 
So let's then jump to the exciting part and have um, a look at different workflows that we can offer here to um, yeah, manufacture clinical T-Rex. So T-Rex manufacturing is basically um, composed of three steps. First, the isolation of the T-Rex, then the T-Rex uh, usually go into an expansion phase to get meaningful numbers for treatment. And then after that, of course, one has to analyze um, the cellular product. For all of these different steps, Miltini Biotech is providing um, suitable products. So this is um, showing the steps in a bit more detail that I will also explain. And um, we do have for the T-Rex isolation um, two workflows, workflow one and workflow two. And in a minute, we will have a closer look at them. So for workflow one, um, the long known uh, Clinimax Plus um, platform is used. It is ta um, taking over the depletion of CD8 and CD19. Um, and the CD25 enrichment step. And then it's optional also to use the max quantito cell surgery if a um, T-Rex subset is um, being looked for. This workflow is um, used in graft versus host um, disease. And um, here the, the aim is to get intermediate um, to high purity T-Rex out of it um, with around 96% of purity. The whole isolation process takes seven hours and the expansion phase, depending on the requirements, can um, last from 12 up to 36 days. However, in the um, recent years, there were um, some pain points that were popping up and um, more requirements to um, T-Rex manufacturing um, came also up. So. Um, Researchers are more looking into T-Rex subsets, such as naive T-Rex, and this is a really small cell population, but on the other hand, one needs high numbers um, for an effective treatment. And on top of that, um, the need for ultra-pure T-Rex is also rising. Um, GMP flow sorting is also a challenging task, and it's hard to get approval for um, clinical studies. So teaming up the um, Clinimax Prodigy and the Max Quantito cell sorter is the perfect fit to address these pain points. And we will have a look at this on the next slides. So this is workflow two that we can provide, and this is based on the Clinimax Prodigy LP25 uh, process. And first, what is done is a CD25 enrichment step. After that, the T-Rex get labeled and they get eluted into sorting buffer, and then they are further sorted on the Max Contito cell sorter. This workflow is used in autoimmune diseases, in CAR T-Rex, and organ transplantation, but also graft versus host disease. And the aim here is to really get out ultra pure T-Rex with a purity of more than 98%. The isolation process in this case takes 10 hours and there is again a expansion phase between 12 and 36 days possible. So let's have a closer look at that. So here we can see that the naive T-Rex are actually a really tiny population of the white blood cells. And when we look at the gating strategy, we see that um, with starting of the cellular product, there's only 3% of target cells. And after the enrichment on the Clinimax Prodigy, we end up with 30% of T-Rex. So the next step would be the um, labeling with max GMP fluorescent antibodies. And please keep in mind that all of these steps are automated. Um, and after that, also um, the cells will be released into um, max GMP um, buffer to go on with the sorting process. And here is an example of this automated um, labeling. So please keep in mind that we do offer um, already a pre-determined um, um, 
panel for this process and it is based on max GMP fluorescent antibodies, but it is also possible to get um, customized panels and to optimize the cell sorting according to your needs. For this, just get into contact with our experts. So now let's have a closer look at the Max Quantito cell sorter. This is a multi-parameter flow sorting device. It has three lasers and eight fluorescence channels and um, the scatter channels. Everything is really happening in a closed cartridge that you see on the top here on the slide. Everything is sterile. The system is an easy plug and play system and it's also easily scalable. Because we use a closed cartridge here, there's no carryover and also no cleaning needed because there are basically no fluidics in the instrument itself. On top of that, there's also no droplet or aerosol production by the instrument. And samples are never lost in the title. They are all um, regained in the cartridge. So let's have a closer look at the cartridge. There is the input chamber where the cell product is coming into. Cells are kept in suspension with this mixing propeller and um, the cells that are target cells are sorted into the positive collection chamber and all of the other ones, they would go to the negative collection chamber. So as I said, there is no waste on the Max Quantito. Um, all the cells are kept in this cartridge. The real magic is happening then on the bottom in the microchip and here is a microchip where the actual sorting process is happening. You can see how small this microchip actually is. And we will also have a look at a short video to um, look how the sorting process is actually working. So here's a valve that can move. It can move really fast up to 30,000 times per second and when the sorting um, process is active, um, the green cells here in this example, they are sorted into the positive collection chamber. So the Max Quantido cell sorter is um, fully closed and sterile. There are no fluidics inside of the instrument itself. Currently, it is being used in more than 10 different clinical trials in phase one or also phase two. And until now, over 200 patient samples have been sorted. All the consumables are um, available in max GMP grade. So the GMP Taito cartridge, the GMP Taito running buffer, as well as the max GMP fluorescent antibodies. This means that everything touching the cells is actually GMP compliant. And we also do provide the documentation for that. So let's have a look at some data here. So um, let's start from left to right. And we have the product here after the um, Prodigy enrichment. We end up with 38% of T-Rex. And then we go into a two-step sorting First, a debulk sorting is done, which is um, yeah, achieving 83% of pure T-Rex. And then the purity sort, um, we will end up with 98% pure T-Rex. So let's move on to the next step, which is T-Rex expansion. So if you have any um, special requirements for the T-Rex expansion or want to have um, your um, workflow automated. There are also customized um, solutions. Please get into contact with our experts and the CUP team to get such solutions running for you. So T-Rex expansion is a really crucial step and also very challenging. So um, here we do have um, after the sort the um, T-Rex, we are staining for FOXP3 to check if this marker is still expressed. And then um, there is a 14 day culture done in Tex-Mex medium with um, stimulants. And after the expansion, um, the cells are again stained for FOXP3 and still stably express this um, T-Rex marker. But please don't forget that T-Rex expansion is really donor dependent and it's also depending on the uh, manual protocol that is being used. And of course, also the expansion um, duration plays an important role. 
So the last step is the TREC analysis. So TREC analysis can um, be done in two ways. On one hand, we can do a phenotypical analysis, and on the other hand, we can also do a functional analysis. Um, here are different markers um, named. First, one can do um, yeah, the basic um, TREC identification, but there are also additional markers possible that further characterize the different TREC subsets. Um, the, for the phenotypical analysis to support you, we do offer different um, options. We have the TREC detection kits. These are optimized antibody kits that are pre-titrated already. And it's also a one reagent solution to really speed up the process and make it as easy as possible. Um, the second option are our re-affinity recombinant antibodies and biodye antibody conjugates. These are high purity and lot to lot consistent um, reagents. And with these recombinant antibodies, it's also not needed to do any FC receptor blocking steps. And to make it even easier, there's only one universal isotype control. The functional analysis of T-Rex is um, a cellular assay. And um, for this, we also provide a kit, which is the T-Rex expression uh, inspector. And this is based on MaxiB technology and um, yeah, coupled to um, antibodies, which gives a um, polyclonal stimulus. Um, and how does it work? So um, in a co-culture with responder T-cells and maxi beads, the responder T-cells would happily um, proliferate according to the stimulus. But when we add the T-Rex on top, because T-Rex are suppressing immune responses, um, they would then also um, suppress the proliferation of the responder T-cells um, if they are fully functional. So these are the uh, main three steps here, the TREC isolation. We have talked about the TREC expansion and we also defined um, different options for the TREC analysis. And with this, I'm um, almost at the end of the talk, but at the end here, I also want to remind you that we have, of course, much more information. We offer brochures for the different products. We do have scientific reports and also posters. We have application notes that are um, explaining the different steps of these applications and showing data, of course. There will also comprehensive reference lists if you are interested in further reading. And I can really recommend to have a look at all this information here. And with this, I really want to thank you for your attention. And um, I'm really happy that you um, were here listening to this um, presentation. <laughs>